I'm at a gypsy. And then you have yeah. Tomac, which is like, he's such a strange one to figure out, you know, like he's so good. And it's like, but he's almost like the Khabib. He's like the Khabib of Dude, Motocross. <laughs> he is, bro. Like, he ain't out fucking around. Like, he's out in Colorado, out in the mountains. Fucking, he ain't wrestling bears, but he's like doing the work. He, you know, there's nothing that that guy does that's going to derail you know his momentum like he's i feel like he's just he's he's you know got a good head on his shoulders like he he fucking he's dominant and he he's not out partying or doing dumb shit like that's what how he's so good you know because it's kind of funny because i seen this andrew yeah. tate top g and he's talking about how he knew khabib was going to beat connor <laughs> he's talking about how he knew khabib was going to beat connor because khabib's 100 percent committed fucking you know his religion and wrestling like that's it right where connor's you know connor's connor and he's like there's not a chance connor's gonna be yeah. and i feel like that's like tomac like us a hundred percent more cross and uh i mean he has a family and stuff now but he's been really good with no you know not really any injuries and obviously he's had a phenomenal career but uh dude unbelievable year he's had like man how much money you think he made this year Supercross, motocross, Des Nations. I wonder. Got the big money just to race Cardiff. He's made some so, cheese. You'd have to like, it'd be maybe 10 million. I would reckon around there. Maybe not that much. Maybe like seven. Seven to 10. Because like, I, I, I feel Alps deal would be a million. The what? Sorry? Like a mill just in Alps. Alpine oh. stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. So, like, He's I feel like there's there's that. There's Oakley. Then you got Bell. Bell don't pay a lot. But then you got the championship is a, a, a milli, probably. Are they still doing 100K championship bonus, uh, win bonuses for Supies? Probably more than that, honestly. Really? Yeah, yeah. dude. He is just, like... Just and then <laughs> probably got a big bag <laughs> from Paris Supercross as well. He's, yeah, he's had yeah, a yeah. phenomenal year. Unbelievable. That's where I'm like, damn. Do you like, know much? Of, do you know much about him? Well, so when I was coming up, obviously 2010, I raced him. I beat him outdoors, and then 2011. Oh no, no, 2010. Yeah, we raced outdoors 2010. 2011, I beat him. And then, dude, he just became an animal in 2012. Like I remember, I when I was racing him on the West Coast, like he just got broad, like big shoulders and like, there's not a backside of a jump that Tomac hit. Like he OJ'd everything. <laughs> and like, it was like, he was like bending his bars when he was riding. It was like, oh, there, he literally didn't touch a backside of a landing. He OJ'd everything. Oh. And then he was just aggressive and fucking really fast. And then, so we were racing that championship and then, uh, yeah, I struggled at the beginning, had really bad arm pump, and then uh, I pulled it together, and then he DNF San Diego, and I won. So I had the red plate by, like, three points. So, like, we had an eight-week break after that, and then we went into Seattle, and um, I really wanted to win this championship. Like, I had never won a Supercross championship, so I worked really hard on that break, and I came in, and he passed me, and then I, like, stuffed him back off the track, and then, like, he passed me again. Or, I don't know. We were going back and forth. I was riding a bit aggressive. But, yeah. And yeah. then, uh, yeah, he just cleaned me. <laughs> and I popped my shoulder out when he cleaned me. And then, like, my shoulder was done, whatever. And, like, I always had to kind of a bad taste in my mouth from that. But um, I remember when I got surgery on my shoulder. And uh, I got back. And I was so bitter on the whole deal. And... I tweeted some stupid shit. I don't even know why it was. And then, like, so ever since then, like, that was, like, I was, like, 20 then. And I was just, you know, wanted to win at the end of the day. And then, but I totally, you know, have nothing against Eli. I think he's fine. And you know what? Like, I respect about him is that, like, he is, hey, he ain't the most flashy guy. He ain't Mr. Personality. But he is who he is, like, I feel like what you see is what you get with him. You know, he just beats his own drum. He goes out to Colorado, does his thing, comes to the races, doesn't really beef with anybody, does his deal, goes back. Yeah. You know what I mean? He kind of just does his deal. So I, yeah. I respect that for sure from him. And 
Yeah, I yeah, think we're fine now. But the, uh, that was uh, that was the the last time I battled Eli, pretty much. Yeah, man. I mean, that was a that was almost a bit of like a turning point in your career. Like I remember, I remember watching that race. I was I was back in Australia. I'm pretty sure. And I remember watching the race, and then I remember afterwards the that you shoulder was fucked basically, and I just was gutted for you. Like that yeah. felt like a pretty big moment in your mm -hmm. in your career, and then trajectories just went. Yeah, dude. you struggled with some injury, and then yeah. he just won everything, and it was oh, like I was always. Yeah, and I mean for for you, like that must have been a pretty tough pill to swallow. Like not even seeing like once it's done you're just seeing the guy that you were beating go and just fucking win everything and then you just got on this like injury roll like it's just such a you know you'd look back in your life at like one moment and how one moment just is oh. like a fork it dude that that to me is like that's probably the most brutal one when i look back at your career that's what it is i've learned a lot you know from like honestly after that injury i got injured pretty much every year when it was 250s with shoulders shoulder 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 and then when i got to 450 it was knees so i was like fucking hell so um yeah it was tough like i was always in it though like 2012 2011 battling for the championship 2012 battling for the championship 2013 had the red plate crashed in the heat race collapsed my lung that was i was done that's the year well Hahn won uh 2014 yep, yep. uh me jason and Seely were going at it for the title then i dnf the race uh, Jason actually, I was leading the race, crashed at San Diego. Jason landed on my front brake caliper, broke it off, had no front brake. That was San Diego 2014. So that was pretty much that championship done. Uh, Jason won that year. And then, so that was the lights. That was lights. So at least every year I was in it though. I was in the title hunt, you know? And then, uh, yeah, yeah. the four fifties is like, see when you step up to the four fifty class, that's just a different game. That's. You got 29 races. You don't just have five or six, seven good guys. You have like 12. It's gnarly. It's the 450 class is like just so tough mentally and physically. Pretty much just getting your ass beat every weekend and having to take it and move forward <laughs> from it. And like, try. you know, it's, dude, it's, it's gnarly. It's not like 250 days where I'm, I remember showing up to the start line knowing I was going to win the heat race. Like, boom. When the heat race, five grand, boom. <laughs> you know, when the main event, 50K, <laughs> boom, 55 grand day. I was like, oh, this is good. 450 class to win a heat race is like, <laughs> fuck. Like, it's so hard. So it's uh, 450. Like, I have obviously the competitors that I race against in the 450 class, but like, I have a respect for them because I just know how fucking gnarly it is, you know? If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.